Hi everyone, welcome back. If this is your first time here, welcome. Today we're talking about the products that I recommend getting from the Spring Sephora VIB sale. These are the products that I use on a regular basis that I think are worth having, that I know and use and love, and that I think are definitely worth you looking at. So if you're interested in seeing what I recommend that you get from this Spring Sephora VIB sale, just keep watching. This is the compliment video to my wish list I just put out on Sunday. If you haven't seen that, I'm gonna have that link down below so you can catch that. It'll give you some more ideas as well. I'll also have that linked above in a card. Those are items that I wanna try myself that I haven't tried yet. There's an assortment of items that I have here. I'm going in no particular order. I'm gonna start with fragrance. I've recommended Jo Malone, Peony, and Blush Suede more times than I can count. I don't think as much is gone from this bottle as there could be, just because I do have a fragrance wardrobe back there on my perfume shelf. But this is one of my top three favorite perfumes probably of all time. Peony and Blush Suede is a beautiful, not overly floral, not overly sweet, fragrance. It's great for every day. It's great for special occasions. Those of you that have this fragrance love it just as much as I do. It wears a long time. It's not overpowering either. I've looked into other Jo Malone perfumes. I haven't bought any yet, but I definitely would. I would definitely repurchase this one as well. I almost got the smaller bottle, but I'm really glad I got the big one because I definitely will use this to the very last drop. I love it. I think that the sale time is a great time to get a fragrance. If you're saving money, you're saving money. A lot of beauty items just don't go on sale that often. And even if you're just saving the tax, you're saving the tax. So if you can get a fragrance at a special price, I say go for it. And I do recommend this for sure. I'll just stick with body. Next up is the Origins Grapefruit Body Wash that I mentioned in my March Favorites and Fails video. That is the best bubble bath and body wash that I've ever tried in my life. I actually didn't even use it as a body wash. I only used it as a bubble bath. And I don't think until that body wash bubble bath that I had used a bubble bath consistently in probably 10 years. But I used that to the end. It was fragrant not only when you were putting it into the bath, but it lasted all bath long. You can go watch my March Faves and Fails to see the full details of that. If you're looking for a bubble bath body wash that smells good, it's energizing yet relaxing at the same time. It was just a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. I loved it. I've definitely repurchased that body wash and I do recommend that for sure from Origins. Shiseido Facial Cotton is a regular repurchase for me from these sales. I keep trying other facial cottons and they just don't work as well. There's something about this facial cotton that they do. It really feels like you're putting your toner or whatever you're putting on your face onto cotton, not a cotton ball. It never ever pills. It never leaves little pieces behind. It's so smooth. These are definitely, definitely worth getting. It's $10 for 165 sheets. I think that's correct. I absolutely love these. And until I find something that is a suitable replacement, I'm gonna keep getting these during the sale because I have yet to find anything that works as well as the Shiseido Facial Cotton. So Too Faced just relaunched their Natural Eyes palette. And I was completely skeptical of it. I think the repackaging is beautiful. I am one that is a huge advocate of the original Natural Eyes. It's one of my favorite neutral basic palettes. I can get a daytime look. I can get a nighttime look from it. It's a great travel palette. It's really versatile. I would definitely look into purchasing this. Now, I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison of the quality of the two, if they're exactly on par. I actually might get this for myself to do that for you guys. Erotica is a shade that I use regularly as a liner, still. I love that shade. I think I've hit pan on it, if I'm not mistaken. So for that reason alone, I would look at getting this palette. If you're looking for just a great neutral palette, it's not too warm, it's not too cool, it's just that great in-between palette. I know we've been inundated with a lot of overly warm palettes, but this one is just that perfect middle ground to me. It's kind of underrated, I think. I think um, it has a really good place in a wardrobe for basics. It's got everything in it. It's got enough mattes, it's got enough shimmers, it's got a non-shimmery brow bone, a non-shimmery transition, shades to line with, shades for the crease that aren't shimmery. It's got a shimmer shade for the lid. I feel like that palette's been out of the spotlight for a long time and now that it's relaunched, it's got another shot. If you've been eyeing up the Anastasia Soft Glam Palette, 
I do have that here. And I did a look with this. I think it was in a get ready with me. Everybody's talking about it. I'm not going to beat that into the ground. But if you're looking for a warmer yet not red-ish, pinkish based palette like Modern Renaissance, this would be a route you could take. The quality is wonderful as you know. This would be a great time to get it. It's really got everything in it. If you want something more neutral warm you can really get a great variety of looks from this palette. So this might be something you want to pick up during the sale. I can't remember what video I actually officially said that the Becca Sunlit Bronzer in Capri Coast was my favorite. Bronzer was it my March favorites? It may have been. Or it may have actually just been in an Instagram live. I can't remember but I've hit pan. And so I am going to restock this and I recommend that you look at one of these bronzers as well. They have several shades. They all seem to be super flattering. They do have a slight sheen to them, but nothing so shimmery that they're unwearable. There's a reason why people really love these bronzers. You can bronze the perimeters of your face where the sun really hits, but you can also dust them lightly all over your face and get a really nice effect and they don't leave you glowing like you're a disco ball because they're super shimmery. They just really give a nice glowy effect to the face. I definitely have to restock this too because I love this bronzer. Definitely my favorite bronzer of the moment. It could change. It's always subject to change, but right now this is my favorite bronzer. I kind of fell in love with the Way texturizing spray. The smell, I have said this before, smells kind of like bug spray but it really works well and I don't find that that scent lasts throughout the day. It's just really when I'm spraying it into my hair. But it really gives me a light texture. It doesn't leave my hair feeling heavy or gunky or anything like that during the day. I am out of it. I finished it. It was in my last empties, I do believe, and I would like to get some more and I do recommend that if you're looking for a texturizing hairspray. That's a really good one. I like the Way line. Most things that I've tried have been pretty good from that line. So that's something that I do recommend if you're looking for a texturizing spray of some sort. I always restock my Nest Moroccan Amber Candle during the spring sale and the fall sale as well. During the fall sale, I also get the holiday candle because it's my favorite holiday candle of all time. But the Moroccan Amber, I used to reserve for fall, but it's become a year round candle for me. It's just a cozy amber scent that a lot of people have come to know the scent of our home by. It's not overwhelming. That makes it sound like it's overwhelming and it's really not. It's just a cozy scent. I don't even know how to describe the scent without using the word cozy. It's a beautiful, warm, cozy scent and I just can't associate it only with fall. It's just a gorgeous scent and they burn so evenly. They've really spoiled me for other candles. I know they're kind of pricey. That's why I get them on sale when I can, but to me they're completely worth it because of the way they burn. I feel like they burn longer than other candles that I've used, so they're definitely worth it, and that is a candle that I would recommend getting if you're looking at a candle or a home fragrance of any sort. They do have reed diffusers too that are really great as well, and they do have other scents. I pretty much like most scents that I've tried from them. I think there's one that I tried that I didn't like that much, but most people do. That was the bamboo, but my heart belongs to the Moroccan Amber. In my wish list video, I had said that I use these sales to restock things that I use consistently to get a little bit of a discount or to try new things or to get pricier things that I might be eyeing up like appliances or maybe facial care tools and things like that. So one thing I'm gonna throw in here is the T3 World Trio. I think that's what this is officially called. So this is something that I got, I don't know if it was a Sephora sale or another sale. This is a curling wand from T3 that has three interchangeable barrels. This one is the fattest one. I wanna say it might be two inches, I'm not sure. This unlocks here and then you can change this out. Then there's a cone shaped wand and then a smaller wand as well. And then you can order different ones too. I love this. I love that there are different temperature settings. It shuts off by itself. I don't feel like my hair gets damaged with this. I've really enjoyed this. It's replaced another one I was using. I can't even remember the brand, but I've been using this for a while now. I really enjoy it. So if you've been looking for a new curling wand, I would check this out for sure. This also, this piece at the end, it looks like it's part of this and that it would get hot, but it doesn't get hot either. This rotates too. This is a pretty 
premium curling wand. It's really good. And on the same note, my daily flat iron is from T3 also. It has the same swivel cord. It does have the same adjustable temperature settings. It shuts off by itself. Um, I want to say these are ceramic or ionic. I have the link down below so that you can check out the details, but I love this thing. I use it regularly. I don't feel like it's damaged my hair. So if you're looking for a flat iron, I would check this out as well from T3. If you have watched any of my skincare videos, you know I've used a variety of things as the first step of my cleansing at night. I always do a two-step cleanse. I remove my makeup and then I go in with my actual facial cleanser. And I've fluctuated between balms and cleansing oils and things like that to remove my makeup. But lately my go-to makeup remover has been the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. I was scared to use this for years and years because I thought it would break me out. I have very sensitive skin. I have oily combination skin. Even though I'm over 40, I still have to worry about breakouts and combination oily skin and things like that. It kind of has the texture of Crisco. You can see that kind of from the side when you scoop it out. My nails kind of match that, don't they? It works beautifully at removing waterproof makeup, all my facial makeup. It's never broken me out. It's never made me greasy or anything like that. This is just my go-to makeup remover lately. They also make it in stick form so that you can travel with it if you really, really want just something small and light to travel with. You can just rub that on your finger and then move it over your eyes or whatever. I've really liked this. This is, I think, my third one. So if you're looking for an effective makeup remover, I definitely recommend Clinique Take the Day Off Balm. I'm giving you a spoiler alert. I have not done a foundation road test on this foundation yet, but I like it and I wanna go ahead and tell you about it in case you are thinking about trying it. You may wanna go ahead and pick this up while you can get a discount on it. It's the Cover FX Power Play Foundation. I've tried it here and there. I just have not done a review on it yet officially. This is really good if you have combination oily skin, and I actually really think that this would be good for dry skin as well. It really does give a natural finish to the skin for a full coverage foundation, and it just doesn't really make you look overly matte. It's full coverage, and it adheres to the skin so nicely and looks like skin, but it doesn't seem to cling or look too matte or masky or anything like that. Now I got the shade G30 and when I first tried it, it seemed to work really well. I don't know if I've gotten a little bit of color in my skin or not, but I kind of feel like I could go a shade down. My foundation shade list is linked below. It's on my blog. So if you are any of my foundation shades, you may want to look at the yellow golden tone shade that's maybe a shade deeper than this. This is just a little bit light, I think. This was supposed to go into my March favorites and I forgot because I was just consistently using it every night and most mornings and I forgot to take it out of my bathroom. So this is gonna go in my April favorites, so I'll probably sound redundant. This is the Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide Cream. I love this so much. It was hyped. So I got it. I love most Drunk Elephant products that I've ever tried. So it was just kind of a natural thing for me to try it. This is a nine signal peptide water lily blend is what it says. It's a facial moisturizer, basically. This is supposed to strengthen, restore, and reinforce the skin and combines an unprecedented array and concentration of signal peptides, growth factors, supportive amino acids, and pygmy water lily for visible and immediate improvement in the appearance of skin's tone, texture, and firmness. And you can use this morning and night. This is lighter than whatever the other moisturizer is that they have, the other cream that I'm completely blanking on the name. I'll put it on the screen. This is a little bit lighter. So if that one is a little heavy for you, you might really like this. And it's got that great dispensing system, which is kind of messy right now because I used it this morning, but it's really great. It kind of pumps out a little bit right there. I'm not gonna waste any product. I love it. It's great. I feel like it's done some things to help even out my skin and help keep my pores refined and everything looking good. I use it on my face. I use it on my neck. I use it every night and I use it most mornings too. Sometimes I only use my sunscreen, which has a little bit of moisturizer in there too. It's really good stuff. So if you've been eyeing that up, I would get that now. I always recommend my Hourglass Veil Primer. Always, 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 I have the big Mac Daddy two ounce tube. I think this is two ounces, yes, it's two ounces. 
This has zinc oxide and titanium dioxide as the sunscreen in it, so it is a natural physical sunscreen, which is what my sensitive skin tolerates. If you have oily combination skin, this is gonna be a great primer for you. I mean, of course I can't speak for everybody, but this is the primer that never lets me down. I'll just say that. I do a lot of foundation tests, and this is my baseline primer that I try everything with. Most things work well with this primer. It just tends to keep everything looking smooth. It makes my pores look good. Foundations go on smoothly over it. It helps my makeup wear longer. It keeps me from getting overly oily during the day. Everything just works better over this primer. I have the little travel size. I have the regular size that I upgraded to this. So I just keep the big size now. I held off forever purchasing this little Kevin Aquan sculpting powder in medium because I thought it was overpriced and I did not understand why on earth the sculpting powder would be so much more than other sculpting powders. It's not too warm, it's not too gray, it's just that perfect combination of both. It creates that beautiful shadow underneath the chin, on the cheek, wherever you need it, it's gonna give it to you in a natural way and it never looks muddy. You don't have to blend it a ton for it to look natural either. I find that I can just put it on, blend it a little bit, and it looks good, which is good for me because I work every day and I don't always have time to sit there and blend, 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 blend in the mornings. So if I can find a product to where I can use something that will decrease any getting ready time in the mornings, that's perfect for me. And now I don't always contour every single morning, but you know, sometimes I will. And this is just the perfect time-saving yet beautiful product. It, it never fails me. It looks great every time. It's easy, it's effortless, and it's the right color. I always, always recommend the Armani eye tints during these sales because people are so hesitant to try them. I think they're underrated, first of all. I don't think that many people talk about them, and they're pricey. However, I am on my second or third cold copper, which I think is the best color. It's completely universal. Anyone can wear this. It will look phenomenal. It's a great neutral. This is the wash of color that I wear on my lid so often and I get compliments from people all the time. Most of the time when you guys ask me what is on my lids, this is it, cold copper. This is cold copper, this is Senso, and this is Onyx right here. And I just swatched them really quickly on the back of my hand. You have Onyx right here, cold copper right here, and Senso is right here and I just kind of blended them out a little bit. They apply perfectly for a liquid product. I find that some liquid products can be a little tricky because they set too quickly and you don't have enough time to work with them. These give you enough time to work with them so that you can blend them out, you can blend them into each other or over a powder and they're absolutely fine and you have enough time to blend out the edges and they stay the way they apply throughout the day. They don't settle into something that looks dry and crinkly like a lot do. I find, especially as your lids get a little more texture as you get older, some of them tend to make you look dry and crepey on your lids. These don't. They look absolutely beautiful on the lid. Like I said, my favorite one is Cold Copper. I wear this as a wash on my lid a lot and I recommend it to people a lot for a reason. It's super flattering. It's very quick to apply for just a wash on the lid. A lot of times in the mornings for work, I'll apply my bronzer as a transition in my crease and almost up to the brow bone, and then I'll use cold copper, which is number nine, I believe, on my lid, and sometimes I'll take it slightly into the crease. I'll even swipe a little bit of it under my lower lash line. I have plenty of time to do all of that, blend out the edges, and I'll put a little bit of a highlight with any light shadow up on my brow bone and I am done. That takes maybe two minutes, the whole process. It's so easy, it's quick, and it looks beautiful and polished. I have two others of these, but these are my three most used shades. I love them, I've even lined with Senso as well, and I actually have a tutorial using Cold Copper and Senso to get a really nice look. I'll link that in my description box so you can see that. And the reason why I say these are worth the money is because I personally get my use out of them and anything is worth the money if you do use it 
regularly. I think they're beautiful. I think they're worth it. I definitely think you should pick them up during the sale. What are you guys planning on purchasing from the Sephora sale? Leave me some comments below. Give me some ideas. Get the conversation flowing amongst yourselves. I would love it if you guys could give each other some ideas. Those are my recommendations. Definitely go check out my wish list video too to get some other ideas for what I want to purchase for myself from the sale. If this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you here on a regular basis as part of the family. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.